to the oldest port in all of Canada, the Port of Quebec. The port is seeped in history because it also helped develop the entire country of Canada. The port was known for its grain terminals. But as Canadian grain began to decline in the 1980s and 1990s, the port turned to cruise ships, welcoming their first official cruise ship in 1991, and turning the port into one of Canada's busiest cruise ship terminals, drawing in upwards of 290,000 passengers a year. The port itself is also very expansive, split up into several different sectors, from the south end, to the north end, to the estuary, to much more. There are also several marinas for people to park their boats, including a large one in downtown Quebec City. The port has also been working on infrastructure, including expanding its old infrastructure and building new terminals for the future. The greatest example is this new sector called Laurentia, which the port proudly proclaims will be the greenest container port in all of Canada and will officially turn the port of Quebec into a container port, or at least a bigger one, because their current capacity is extremely limited. Construction is expected to last four years, so its finish date will depend on when they start. In 2012, the port achieved a milestone, moving 33.1 million tons of goods, a record still not matched to this day. But they're hovering close and ready to pounce when the moment is right. The Port of Quebec is definitely a major player in Canada's port scene. Its importance is paramount, and it's obvious that the port knows this. They know they can make up ground on other ports and continue to grow, because they are strategically located and closer to Canada's inland cities. It'll definitely be interesting to see how this new container port helps fuel the economy around the Port of Quebec, and if they can truly grow into a known global port. The Port of Halifax, Canada's Atlantic Gateway to the World. Ready, capable, efficient. Make Halifax your port of choice. Choose a port that is ready to meet your needs now. Choose a port with solid connections to major markets in North America. Choose a port with reliable service you can count on. Choose the Port of Halifax. Via the Suez Canal, Halifax is at least one full day closer to Asia than any other North American East Coast port. Halifax is perfectly positioned to provide international shippers with rapid access to the eastern and central markets of Canada and the United States. It is one of the few ports on the East Coast of North America capable of handling fully laden post-Panamax vessels. Halifax has the second largest natural harbor in the world, boasting two modern container terminals offering the deepest berths on the entire North American East Coast. Both container terminals can readily accommodate a double call of post-Panamax ships. Dock workers are highly skilled, part of a dedicated and stable workforce. Over $350 million in investments have been made in port-related infrastructure in recent years. Significant upgrades have been made at the two Halifax container terminals. Both terminals have CN's highly regarded Class 1 rail service on dock, which offers shippers some of the most attractive rail rates in North America. CN Rail's daily direct double-stack service quickly routes cargo to Montreal, Toronto and Chicago. From here, they can be directed by CN and its partner companies to destinations anywhere in North America. Approximately 70% of all goods arriving in Halifax are shipped via rail to transportation centers in Canada and the United States. The city of Prince Rupert, where the port of Prince Rupert is the closest Canadian seaport to Asian markets. And the port is unique in that it relies so much on trains because none of the goods stay in Prince Rupert. No, they're trained out to the rest of Canada and the U.S. In 1975, the federal government of Canada declared the Port of Prince Rupert a national harbor and followed that up by building various facilities and expanding the port. By far the biggest change came in 2005 when the Port Authority announced that the Fairview Terminal would be converted into an intermodule container shipping terminal. And that's huge because in a short amount of time, it instantly became Canada's third largest container port overall, moving roughly 1.3 million TEUs, 20-foot equivalent unit volume. 
or the measurement of shipping containers. But the port didn't stop there because they had their eye on more improvements, and a goal to become the largest shipping container port in all of Canada. But the port is actually quite diversified, much more than just containers, and the type of cargo will depend on which terminal the ship lands at. For example, here's the Ridley Island docks, as you can see, the trains come right up and loop around. There's a grain terminal there, as well as sulfur loading. If we move on, we come to the Fairview Terminal, which is where the containers are located. There's also marinas along the city's waterfront, and on the other side, a seaplane base, as well as some logging businesses and other industries. Overall, the Port of Prince Rupert is quite diverse, especially given its size and remote location. Port St. John, or as I will keep calling it, the Port of St. John, has many unique attributes that makes it unique to each Eastern Canada's ports. The port has many different properties around the city, including this, which is privately owned, Canada's largest oil refinery, Canada's only LNG marine facility, aka natural gas, which makes this Canada's largest oil port. But now onto the facilities that the port actually owns, which is this area. This is the location of the two different cruise terminals that the port runs, as well as two wharves. Opposite of downtown, we have the main DP World Terminal and the American Iron and Metal Yard. And then last but not least, we have the Barrack Point Potash Terminal. So as you can see, there's a lot of different moving parts to this port. The cruise ship slips alone help make the port become the fourth busiest cruise ship terminal in Canada. The port's biggest exports are oil, potash, and forestry products. The port is currently working on its antiquated cargo terminal to allow for more space, and it's quite obvious the new design will have huge improvements and big impacts. It makes use of space better and will allow for bigger ships to come to dock. The current capacity is about 150,000 TEUs in terms of cargo. The new capacity is expected to be 300,000 TEUs. So to reiterate, the main cargo at the Port of St. John is not containers. Again, it goes back to oil, potash, and forestry products. But when the improvements are complete, this will further make the Port of St. John an even bigger player in Canada's seaport market. It should be an exciting decade ahead for... It is located on the St. Lawrence River, and the port operates as an international container port, where it serves the city of Toronto, as well as central Canada. The port is located roughly 1,600 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean, or 990 miles about, and its biggest competitor would be the Port of Quebec, which is closer to the Atlantic Ocean and continually expanding its container operations, which makes some in Montreal a little wary. Ship operators don't have to have their ships go as far inland if they can stop in Quebec instead of Montreal. Saves them time, saves them money. But the Port of Montreal provides a wealth of features that other ports just can't match, especially Quebec, at least not yet. So let me show you what the Port of Montreal has and how it's able to compete against others in the region. Closest to downtown is the Bickerdike Terminal. This terminal is key for services in Newfoundland and the Magdalen Islands. Cruise ships park at Iberville Terminal, and people can park their recreational boats at Alexandra Pier. This next area is where the majority of the dry bulk services are done at the port. Products from agriculture, gypsum, or ores are all handled here. Next, we have the port's newest area, the VO Terminal which upon completion of some upgrades, will be able to handle 620,000 TEUs by itself. Right next to it is the grain terminal as well. We move on to the international containerized cargo area. These shipments go all around the world and make up roughly 50% of the Port of Montreal's annual volume of cargo. At the easternmost end of the port's reach, we have the liquid bulk zone. So products like gasoline, diesel, any type of oil or fuel, and in 1983, the port management reorganized and became the Montreal Port Corporation. That same decade, they also opened their third container terminal. In 1999, the port yet again reorganized and became the Montreal Port Authority under the Canada Marine Act. In 2020, the port moved over 14 million metric tons of container cargo alone. A slight decline over the year before, but still big enough to be Canada's second largest container seaport and Canada's second largest seaport overall. 147 million metric tons of goods were moved in 2020. The port has over 29 major marine terminals. The port extends beyond its city of Vancouver city limits and extends into cities in the surrounding area. Many of these 29 ports are privately owned, but all under the banner of the Port of Vancouver. They move automobiles, brake bulk, project cargo, bulk cargo, container cargo, and even cruise lines. There's no doubt that the Port of Vancouver is a busy port. Whether moving coal and coke from the West Shore terminals, or transporting oil or chemicals at the Richmond Logistics Hub, 
or dropping off goods at any one of the many different terminals in Vancouver Harbor, whether it's oil, container, or chemicals. Some of the port's largest container terminals are right here. Most of Canada's import cars come through the port of Vancouver. There are at least two terminals for that. And the Fraser Surrey Docks are a multi-purpose marine terminal that handles brake bolt commodities as well as general cargo such as logs, steel, machinery, and project cargo. The port is also working on expanding its container capacity in a long-term project they plan to finish by 2030. The upgrade would increase their Delta port container capacity by 600,000 TEUs. The port of Vancouver is also North America's biggest coal port. They exported more than 36 million tons of coal in 2017. That is more than double the amount of coal produced in all the coal mines in Mexico in a single year. And that is Canada's number one largest seaport. The Port of Vancouver. Port St. John.